Hello and welcome, I'm Mir Kudmaki. So after almost a decade of waiting, Silksong finally got a release date. Just last week they finally came out of the shadows to publish a trailer, and suddenly they announced the release date is September 4th. So yep, after people trying to guess all kinds of clues and all kinds of shows it finally happened, and because of this sudden release date, some developers are delaying the release of their own games just to try to avoid Silksong. And this is actually a very interesting subject, it leads to a very important topic, which is, should you be afraid when a very popular game launches or is about to launch on the same date as your game is? And the answer to that question is pretty much what I wrote in the title, which is also what I wrote here, so don't be afraid of Silksong. So last week, one of the most anticipated things of all time actually happened, Silksong got a release date, it's coming out on the 4th of September, and due to this surprise fast release date announcement, there are some indie devs that are changing their release date to try to avoid Silksong. There's at least 8 developers making this change. This is a post on Game Developer that compiled a bunch of developers that are delaying their game, so here we've got a whole bunch of them. And if you want to learn how to make games, then check out my free complete courses. If you want to learn the super valuable C Sharp language itself, then check out my free C Sharp course. It covers everything from the language from beginner to advanced. Or if you prefer learning how to make a game itself, you can watch my free Catch and Chaos course. That one will teach you how to make a really awesome 3D game. Alternatively, I just recently released my free Learner 2D course, so this is a great beginner 2D course. Alternatively, for multiplayer, you can check out my free course on making a simple multiplayer game. Or if you're more advanced, then check out my DOTS course. This is definitely very advanced stuff, but if you are an intermediate user, then DOTS is an insanely powerful tool that I really think you should know. So yep, check out all of those with the link in the description. And then like I wrote here, so this is an interesting topic, the question is, does a very popular game coming out actually hurt your chances? So should you be afraid of Silk Song or some other huge game launching on the same day as your game? And the answer is most likely no. So whether you're releasing right now or releasing any time in the future, for example if you're planning on releasing next March and you're afraid of something like GTA 6, if so then like I said here, the answer is most likely no, you don't have to be afraid of that. Because the reason is because Steam and the gaming market is absolutely massive, if you're on the internet regularly then it might seem like Silent Song is widely anticipated, which it is, but also remember how Steam has 400 million users and consoles have something like 200 million more. So if the size of the gaming market is truly insane, Sometimes you might think that these kinds of games like GTA 6 and Silk Song, it might seem like literally everyone is going to play these games. And while there are definitely millions of people that are definitely waiting for these games, there are still millions more that don't really care about it. The entire gaming ecosystem is very very varied. If you want you can just go on Steam and then over here browse the top sellers page. And over here you will find games that are popular in pretty much every single genre. So you've got shooters, you've got third person shooters, you've got looter shooters, you've got RPGs, sports games. You've got RPGs, exploration games, multiplayer games, mech games, western games, you've got competitive games, you've got free-to-play games, medieval games, you've got co-op games, there are horror games, more free-to-play games, more interesting games, more strategy games, some very hardcore, some very casual. So over here you can find top sellers and these are literally the ones that are making millions upon millions of dollars. And over here you can already see quite a lot of variety and if you scroll down to let's say the number 100 on this list, over here things start to become even more varied. So like this Medieval Dynasty, this is some kind of colony sim game, then you've got Mafia the Old Country, a very linear standalone story focused game, then you've got an RTS game, then this is another strategy game, you've got Total War game, you've got Like a Dragon, so kind of an RPG, then you've got Squad, another multiplayer game, Other Wilds, really excellent game, very different, very unique, Darkest Dungeon, so really all kinds of things. So basically the main point is that the gaming market is so massive that there's probably enough players to serve all kinds of different genres. So even if one game seems like it's pretty much going to take up literally everyone inside the entire game industry, chances are it's really going to take a big amount, millions of players, but not literally every single player. Like I wrote here, so Hollow Knight, despite being a mega hit, it sold 15 million copies, which by the way, that is utterly insane. 15 million copies of an indie game? That is pretty much unheard of, that is truly insane. So the original game, this is definitely one of the most successful games of all time. Not just indie games, but just games in general. Meaning that there are 585 million players who did not play the original, and likely have no interest in the sequel, despite the fact that it seems like everyone wants things so. So yep, whenever you hear these giant numbers like 50 million copies, remember the other side of that equation. So there are, let's say, 585 million players that haven't played that game and probably don't care about the sequel. So that's a lot of people, millions and millions of people, that might be interested in your game, and the fact that your game launches on the same date as the other game, it probably won't matter to these people who are probably not interested in the other game anyway. So for the most part, you do not have to freak out if some popular game is launching on the same day or near release date of your own game. And then of course the caveat, because general rules are general, but of course there are always exceptions. So over here, so the only scenario where I would recommend you do change your release date is if your game offers a very, very similar experience to the one coming out. So if you have a Metroidvania platformer, then yeah, perhaps don't launch on September 4th, but for every other game in every other genre, it won't matter. So over here in the list that Game Developer Compound, over here on this one, there's this game, Eternal Lucy's, and this one is indeed a Metroidvania platformer. So this one is probably wise to actually delay it. But then for example, there's this one, Clover Pit. So this one is a roguelite, roguelike gambling strategy game. So what exactly is the overlap of audience between Hollow Knight Silk Song and this game over here? 
I would say there's probably very little overlap. Of course, there are players that play pretty much every single genre, but still, the odds of a player not buying this completely different game because it's Song, the odds of that are very, very low. Especially considering how this game itself, this one has about 150, 160,000 wishlists. So that's already more than big enough to find success on Steam. And if it finds success on Steam, if it actually gets a kick during launch on the algorithm, if so, then the algorithm will definitely find one of those millions of people that are not interested in Silk Song, but will probably be interested in this one game. And now perhaps you might be doubting if what I'm saying here is actually accurate or not, if I'm saying this just based on a feeling or if there's actual data. So like a root here, so, and there's actually data to back up what I'm saying here. So have you heard of the game Chill Aquarium? So here's the game on Steam. It is a massive hit. Look at this, almost 5,000 reviews. So I believe this one has made something like $1.5 million. So definitely a mega hit. And look at this game. It's a really nice, cozy game. It's a cozy, relaxing idle game. Definitely very interesting. And look at the release date, 6th of September, 2023. And what other game came out on that exact same date? And yep, here it is, Starfield. So 6th September, 2023. Now the reviews on this one are mixed. People were pretty disappointed with this game. But still, back then, this was definitely a super hyped game. People were definitely looking forward to the next game by Bethesda. So this is going to be Skyrim in space. People were definitely very hyped for this one. And still, despite the reviews being mixed, despite that, it still has 80,000 reviews, so it's still sold millions of copies. And again, despite launching on the exact same date, this massive game launching on that date, and that tiny indie launching on that date, since both are very, very different things on very, very different genres, because that, really, there was no overlap between players, and Starfield found the level of success that it found next to the reviews, and Channel Aquarium found an insane amount of success because it's a very, very different game that appeals to a very, very different player base. So yeah, it's like I said here, so Channel Aquarium, this one is a mega hit, made 1.5 million, and launched on the same day as Starfield. Since they are clearly targeting a very different audience of players, it did not matter. And like I wrote here, so if you're afraid of this, then I highly recommend you read Chris's blog post on this topic. So this is a topic on how to market a game on this really awesome blog post, and it's talking about the other game that succeeded during the Starfield launch. So yep, this is a story about Channel Aquarium, a very, very tiny indie game, how it launched on the exact same day as the other massive AAA game, and despite that, found quite a lot of success, or perhaps in spite of it, found quite a lot of success. Because actually, what he says here is how indies were changing their launch to basically avoid Starfield. They were doing that back then. And because of that, that means fewer indie games actually launch on that exact same day. So this game, by actually launching on that same day intentionally, because of that, it actually found more visibility on Steam because of it. So instead of hurting it because it was launching on the same day as a massive AAA game, instead of that, it actually helped it. It helped it not just on release itself, but also before release. So basically got onto the popular coming roughly 30 hours before release, and it resulted in almost 2,000 wishlists in a single day. So yep, here is the wishlist graph as a massive spike, because again, since everyone was trying to avoid Starfield, there weren't many games coming out on that day, meaning that those slots for the popular upcoming, those weren't being replaced as quickly, meaning this game got on there for quite a while and made tons and tons of wishlists. Then of course, because that managed to land on the new and trending, which then managed to sell quite a bit of copies, and then by selling quite a bit, it got kickstarted into the algorithm, which again sold more and more copies and ended up making something like 1.5 million. So yep, if you want to read more on this topic, I highly recommend you read this blog post over here. And if you want to learn more about Steam Game Marketing, check out the videos that I did with Chris Zukowski. Chris has a ton of Steam Marketing knowledge, so definitely go ahead and watch all these free videos, or pick up his course to get all of that knowledge condensed into one single place. And then like I wrote here, so I'm looking forward for Silent Song releasing, and I really hope the game is as great as people are hoping it is. It's been eight years since the original, that's a long time. It will be interesting to see if the sequel finds as much success, considering how the world is so much different nowadays than it was in 2017. So if this will definitely be a very interesting release. I really hope the game is awesome and people love the game. And I hope you'll learn some useful knowledge in this video. So if you're planning the release date for your game, don't be afraid if you decide on some kind of date that matches up with some super popular game, either AAA or indie game. Because chances are, unless you are on the very specific genre as that very popular game, if you are on literally every other genre, then it really does not matter. So don't be afraid of that, plan your release date in any way you want, then just launch the game, and if you do some good marketing and the game is good, then releasing it next to a super popular game not only will it not hurt you, it actually might help you. By the way, I wrote about this in my Game Dev Report newsletter. This is what I write every single week with the latest Game Dev news and any interesting articles that I come across every single week. There's a new issue published every Sunday. You can sign up for free, so check it out to the link in the description. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.